Hey, Steve Ostrowski with Trimble here and uh, the Building Point team. Um, just wanted to give you a rundown of how to use the X7 to scan an environment, in this case my home. Um, and then we'll actually bring that data directly off the tablet into uh, different varying CAD programs. Uh, first being RealWorks to do some meshing modeling, then SketchUp to do some basic tracing, Revit and AutoCAD to do some MEP work, and even Tecla to do some steel and concrete work. Um, but the capturing of the environment is all done via FieldLink and the tablet. I'm going to be showing you this on my screen here, um, actually on my desktop. So I'm going to present my screen and then show you how to initially collect a scan. So scanning is great when you um, don't have uh, any asphalt data or a model to go off of. So you're typically doing this on renovation or retrofit so that you can then um, design and actually design within an eighth, sixteenth of an inch, design what you want to put in um, so you can prefab uh, which any component to fit there. Um, what I'm doing now is actually just creating a zero zero point so that I can align these scans to so I know my base coordinate um, and I can set that to, to what I would like um, essentially within the room or within my house. Um, if I had a model or a PDF, um, FieldLink allows you to bring in any essentially any 2D or 3D model uh, and align your scans to them so that they're in the right coordinate system. In this case I don't have one so I'm just going to do a zero and then set it to uh, so north is, is going in. I'm going to do a fast low capture just to make this a little bit faster. Um, this is good for indoor scans and we'll only do the auto calibration and uh, leveling on the first scan. We'll do a fast image collection as well and we'll set this uh, layer to first so that it, it puts it on that layer. So in this case I'm going to uh, got to turn my scan visibility back on in my settings real quick. Um, I'm going to start the scan off and then it will uh, bring that scan in. I The X7 will collect 500,000 points a second, but before it scans it will actually turn back and forth like you just saw to self-level itself to three seconds. It is the only scanner on the market to really get down to that level of accuracy um, so we can do super flat floor analysis. Is also the only optical instrument in the world to do a self calibration, which is what it's doing right now. It'll shoot to the base there, um, make sure that all the data it's going to collect is going to be um, spot on, and then you don't need to send it in us to get serviced. Um, ships with a two year extended warranty, but that self calibration is good for the life of the instrument as long as you treat it pretty well and should save you about three to five grand a year, <laughs> depending on how much you get charged to. To have us calibrated and set on a known spot and shoot known points. Um, but also ensures that the data is always good. So self-calibration, self-leveling are huge. The other thing this scanner has on it is a laser pointer. So you can use it to resect like you would a GPS. I'm using FieldLink. This is the same building's uh, layout software that we use on our RTS systems or with our 986 GPS receiver outdoor. But I'm actually going to bring in scan data. Um, to reference back to and actually align and process there. But if I wanted to, I could use the X7 just like an RTS um, out in the field. So right now it's scanning. There's a little rotating mirror on the inside picking up a couple million points or so. Um, and then once it gets to 50%, it's going to actually start the transfer of the scan data from the scanner here in an SD card actually right there to the tablet. Um, and then it'll load in. It'll actually import. It'll be a preview screen. Um, or preview scan, sorry. Um, so we're not going to show you all the scan points on the tablet, but when you go to export, you'll send all that data to someone else. So there's so many points and so many measurements that can actually tell precisely where, <laughs> what everything is. As long as you can see it, you can see the edge because there'll be so many points spread out. All those points, again, are to about a two millimeter range accuracy. Um, it's about the same level of accuracy as your RTS. After we've has built my house, I'm actually going to export it and then with all those other CAD programs, design in a, a model, right? And then design in essentially my new kitchen um, is the plan. So once the scan imports or once the scan's done taking images, I will um, then pick it up and move it and take another scan. You can see right there the scan came in. This is actually I go to the back of my house, I'm going to rotate it 90 automatically so that I can draw my house. If you actually look at it, 
this wall right here is actually this wall and my whole house is that way so i want to make sure that's going north this is kind of the back of it i'm then going to align the scan to this zero zero point that i created um, i could always change this later but i typically like to do this on the first scan just so i can kind of set my orientation um, if you line the scans up via uh, manually aligning it like this you can generally get it very accurate meaning you can try and align it I'd say roughly a quarter inch or so if you're good um, it's not going to be perfect but it should be very spot on so here I'm actually aligning in the elevation so that zero is near the floor here um, if I need to later actually use what I train is this is the best way to line up a scan and then later you can always um, resect and set the scanner up just like a total station to very precisely align it so let me see if that's on the right wall and I might be hitting the wrong one there we go make sure it's up a little bit of high higher I can use the laser pointer to hit a reference elevation if I wanted to place it that way or again use that resection but now my kind of corner of the room which is right here um, so the scanner is not even going to be able to see the corner because I'm in the way. Um, it's going to be my zero zero. I can hit accept and I'm ready to go collect some more scans. Um, typically we have different ways to view it but this is kind of what the scanner captured. I'm going to pick up the scanner and move it so here's that zero zero point we couldn't see. Um, and then I'm going to collect another scan so that I can kind of capture um, throughout the house, right? Um, so give me one second to pick up the scanner and move it. You can see I just move it to a doorway. That's kind of how you do um, scanning on this part. Um, you can see some of my QR codes up there, which I'll be showing in a later video after we make the model to align it with those. Um, but you move it throughout the house. How far can you go in between a scan? That actually depends on how open the environment is. In this case, it's only about 10 feet because there's a wall there. I actually have to make sure there's some overlapping spot between that scan and the scan that happened here. Um, I think I covered my house in about 20 scans, not a very big house. Um, it took about 40 minutes and then I exported it. That will take a little bit more time, but it's not time coming off my back because it just processes on the tablet by itself to export out to whatever format I needed in. Um, once it's aligned and I collect all that, um, I can do measurements within the program and actually look to make sure it's capturing everything. Um, it is taking images, but that'll usually colorize on the end. Um, but this is kind of what the station view looks like. As I go through, um, you're going to see it's going to collect more and more of that data. And then I'm able to even do measurements as well, too. So I can do basic kind of field measurements like you're seeing here. I can also look at what the scanner wasn't able to pick up. This scanner does great at picking up dark or reflective surfaces, um, depending on angle of incidence and um, how close it is. It will obviously not pick up everything that's clear, but as you move through, it should pick up any HVAC or dark or mechanical piping. We'll see some examples of that later. Um, it just finished actually collecting the second scan. It is transferring that across. Right now it's taking pictures again. Um, once that second scan comes in, I'm going to change the color. Is it's going to import and then try and register back to the first. So, uh, a lot of scanners do in-field registration, um, but this is the first scanner to do in-field uh, refinement along with that and uh, georeferencing uh, back to a model of coordinate system, so you can really export the data from here to your CADFM software and, and work immediately there. So I'm going to change the color one more time. Um, so that we can see the two different scans in two different colors. So here is scan two and there's scan one and then they're going to try and fit together as best they can on top of each other. Um, if this doesn't happen automatically there are ways to manually fit the puzzle pieces together. Uh, in general 80% of the time it'll happen automatically. Uh, we do have some workflow so to, to kind of fix it up if it doesn't happen automatically. Um, I'm then going to not show you scanning me, me scanning my entire house because that'll take about 40 minutes or so. Um, but here I can see that those two fit together actually very well, especially looking at like the walls and stuff. Um, but I'm, I'm not going to go through and actually scan uh, 
<laughs> scan my entire house, but after this, I, I'll open up another project showing you that. Um, I'm going to want to just double check to make sure everything's kind of registering together correctly by just looking at the overlap of these two scans, make sure the automatic uh, wave function correctly, and then I'm able to export this. Um, once the scan's done, uh, we'll go through a couple of other things that make the export nice, um, and we'll talk about this on the other CAD programs as far as what to export in. But I can, from here, do a section box, and I can send just the data that is, again, referenced to that um, zero, zero point. I can send like a horizontal slice of the data. And what this is going to do is show me the floor plan of my office here and then the start of my kitchen. Um, I can actually send just uh, just that section view as an RCP, or I can send the entire thing when I turn the, the section view off. Um, that's what allows me to clip it a little bit better and actually lighten up the amount of data I'm sending. Because these scans are refined and georeferenced when I go to export it, um, that little bit of a clip section will actually come in the right spot. Um, let me open up one more job to kind of show you what the overall, I guess the the completed scan kind of looks like um, and that'll be what I actually send to uh, SketchUp and, and Revit and AutoCAD and all those other programs where I'll actually model them in. So it, today um, it is November 2021. 20, uh, these scans I initially took when I first moved in um, in January 2020 um, and it, it probably took me about 40 minutes to do all those and then maybe a little bit more to export but I'm not really paying too much attention when I'm exporting because it just runs without me so generally two to five minutes depending on scan type per scan to colorize and and export um, to an RCP if I go to AutoCAD or Revit um, if I go to Tecla or SketchUp I can just go to TZF or TDX which is essentially instantaneous um, in those programs you want to bring them in again but Looks like the scan is opened up. You can kind of see a good overall um, scan plan here as we go through here. What it looks like to bring all that data in. And this will be what I actually will bring back into uh, the other, my, um, my CAD programs to start to design. So you can start to see I have a basic model there and I'm gonna show you how I create, created that. Um, but again, if I can do this little section view, it's only gonna send that data there as well. I have different ways to view it, but this is kind of a nice way, and I can even colorize it after I'm done, so you can start to see what that scan data looks like. You can also see I have currently existing a model um, that I will that I've created, and I'll create another one um, in those different programs and, and show you what that looks like and how to do that. Um, then I'm gonna add in my new uh, kitchen and show you, I guess, what the plan is there to design. Uh, that new kitchen so um yeah thanks a lot we will uh catch up on a couple more videos on those different cad programs and how to create that model and then the plan is to use the xr10 to then uh view that uh new kitchen that i'm remodeling or renovating uh live show my wife and, and my daughter what what we might get if we invest that money <laughs>